What's up, peers, and welcome to Bitcoin to the Max here on the World Crypto Network. And today we continue our discussion on the phenomenal book by Mary Rothbard, What Has Government Done to Our Money? And specifically, uh, of course, applied to Bitcoin. We start with Chapter 5, the Bitcoin unit. Now that we have seen how Bitcoin emerges and what it does, we may ask, how is the Bitcoin scarce commodity used? Specifically, what is the stock or supply of Bitcoin in society and how is it exchanged? In the first place, most tangible, physical, scarce goods are traded in the terms of weight. Weight is the distinctive unit of tangible commodities. And so trading takes place in terms of units like tons, pounds, ounces, grains, grams, etc. Bitcoin, well, is a exception. Uh, Bitcoin, unlike other commodities, will be not traded in units of weight. It is obvious, though, that the size of the common, uh, common unit chosen in trading makes no difference to the economist. Uh, one peer might use the Bitcoin denomination and another peer might use the Satoshi denomination. As all units are convertible into each other, uh, one Bitcoin equals 20, uh, 100 million Satoshis. Assuming that Bitcoin is chosen as the money, the size of the Bitcoin unit uh, is immaterial to us. Alice may sell a coat for one Bitcoin, uh, or he may, he may sell it for 100 million Satoshis. All this might seem like laboring the obvious, except that the great deal of misery in the world would have been avoided if people had fully realized this simple truth. Nearly everyone, for example, thinks as the money as an abstract unit of something or another. Uh, each cleaving unequally to a certain country. Even when countries were the gold standard, people thought in similar terms. America's money was the dollar, the French was Fran francs, the German was marks, etc. All these were admittedly tied to gold, but all were considered sovereign and independent. And hence, it was easy for countries to go off the gold standard. Yet, all these names were simply names for units of weights of gold and silver. And here I always hear Rothbard haggling along. The dollar is a measurement of weight, goddammit. <laughs> for the British, pound sterling originally simplified a pound weight of silver. And what of the dollar? The dollar began as a generally applied name for the ounce weight of silver coined by a bohemian count named Schlick in the 16th century. The Count of Schlick named the Joachim's Valley of Joachim's Tal, and the Count's coins earned a great reputation for the uniformity and fineness, and they were widely called Joachim's Talers, or finally Taler, and the name Dollar eventually emerged from Tala. On the free market, then, the various names of units may have a simple definition by units of weight, well, or Satoshis. When we were on the gold standard before 1933, people liked to say that the price of gold was fixed to a $20 per ounce of gold. But this was a dangerously misleading way of looking at the money. Actually, the dollar was defined as the name for approximately 1 20th of an ounce of gold. It was therefore misleading to take out to talk about exchange rates of one country's currency for another. The pound sterling did not really exchange for $5. The dollar was defined as 1 20th of a gold ounce, and the pound sterling was at the same time defined as the name of 1 4th of a gold ounce. Simply trading 5 20th of a gold ounce. Clearly, such exchanges and such welter of names were confusing and misleading. How they are across, uh, how they arose is shown below in the uh, chapter on government meddling with money. In a purely free market, gold or Bitcoin would simply be exchanged directly as, well, Satoshis, uh, grains or ounces or, well, Bitcoin. 
And such confusing names as dollars, francs, etc., would be superfluous. Therefore, in this section, we will treat money as exchanging directly in terms of satoshis. Clearly, the free market will choose as the common unit whatever size of the money commodity is most convenient. If platinum were the money, it would likely be traded in terms of fractions of an ounce. If iron were used, it would be reckoned in pounds or tons. Clearly, the size makes no difference to the economist. Again, a phenomenal chapter here by Murray uh, on the true on the true monetary unit and applying this to Bitcoin again makes complete sense. One Bitcoin is 100 million Satoshis. There is no exchange rate between Bitcoin and Satoshis as they simply are different names for different quantities of the same base monetary unit. Just like ounces and grams of gold just are the same measurement or, or different measurements for the same underlying base money. And so is it the case for Bitcoin. Again, insightful. And also it shows that the unit bias used by shitcoins like Ripple uh, or the dollar or euros uh, is completely nonsensical as the amount of currency doesn't matter. Uh, it just is the percentage allocation to the total money supply. Pierce, thank you again for joining me here on the reading of what has government done to our money on Bitcoin to the max. And thanks to you, the peers of the World Crypto Network, uh, who support on teleco.in slash Max. You get early access uh, to all these chapters that I've pre-recorded. Thank you very much and see you on the next show. Bye-bye.